Warning, this show contains adult language, so viewer and listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another edition of Up and Ended. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's entirely dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life raw. The background noise is my vehicle, and that's uh, my, on my work commutes. This is my mobile studio for now as we get the show going. Today's episode 209. This is just a, an open rant. Uh, yesterday I was driving in my vehicle and I was trying to look at notes and things. I had people cutting me off and uh, it got very distracting. And I figured I'd give myself a break from the stress of dealing with that and just talk off the cuff today about, uh, about our condition that we have right now. This is uh, April of two, uh, 2021. Of just of human beings and the and the the sufferings and the the opportunities and things that we have here, uh, what what we can do to make life better, basically. And I want to start off with yesterday. What inspired me for today's show is I spoke with a few uh, people. Uh, uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Yesterday, and everybody's freaking out. Some people are saying we're going to we're heading towards a civil war. The whole world's turning upside down. America's fallen to pieces and you know we've had all kinds of problems before and there is uh, a simulation of these things I think that it's like a, a mathematical equation if you look at what happened <coughs> excuse me from a lot of these things of paranoia uh, to take away uh, take make things scarce uh, apply scarcity apply fear and see how people react and a lot of these people that I know are pretty smart individuals and it seems like I don't know, like a lot of people just kind of don't get it. Uh, and I kind of want to bring it out now too, to why people are like this and why a lot of people are living in fear and why a lot of people think that they're weak. And this is the key word, they think that they're weak. They think that there's nothing that they can do about their own situations, about the world situations and things like that. Because when we're born and we're raised and even to into adulthood, we all like to cement each other up with uh, just straight up, I'll be frank, fucking bullshit uh, of reasons, many reasons of why things suck and why we can't do things. And it's a very sick energy. It's a very weird thing when you go out and you notice somebody talking about some horrible news or some, some dirt that they got on the next person. And when you look at their face, there's almost like this sense of joy, anger, and just like evil. They look like the evil villain, you know, that gets off on hurting people, you know? Not quite, but just just study the information, look at things. I'm like, this is really horrible stuff. You should not even have a smirk on your face, you know? But the, it, I guess it's more like some excitement. And it goes to show that most people don't have much going on in their lives, especially if they're so attuned to what's going on with everybody else's lives. But where did all this stem from? And I think that there's a lot of people who we call the woke, you know, in the woke stage, whatever the fuck that means to each individual. To me, that means that you're kind of aware of stuff. You, you understand patterns and you, tr and you look back throughout history and see when there was so-called like the Spanish flu and there was Great Depression and all these kind of things. And you kind of look at the, the movement of things that happened and, and watch how people reacted to them. So it's kind of like the moth to the light. Uh, we are, again, returning back to how we're raised. I can't, you get angry when you're a woke person, but you have to understand that a lot of these people never even uh, stood a chance, even if they are semi-intelligent. Um, we're born with these, these basically, we're, we have like food and stimulation, like sugars and things like that, you know? I think a lot of woke people start looking around them and going, wow, you know, look what sugar does. Sugar is actually a pretty bad thing. You know, when you, when you start scientifically breaking it down and biologically what it does to your body, and uh, it's, it's a big root of diseases. It's almost like a, it's a drug. It's a drug out there, and the producers of this know this. That's why they add it to just about everything. So if you try to go for a sugar-free diet, absolutely no sugar, start reading labels on things, right? So the point is, is that we're stimulated from birth and from when we're children that you, we go to... Uh, uh, your birthday, you get a big giant frosting cake full of lard and, and oils and things like that. Fats, when you mix fats with sugar, is one of the worst things you can do for yourself. Uh, <laughs> but 
uh, what it does, I'm not necessarily talking about health, is a stimulation, I think, in the mind. Uh, when we started watching uh, shows, Mama Strega is the one who brought this up. Is one like this old show, Sesame Street. I don't even know if it's still around. Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch and all those kind of things. Uh, they started trying to teach kids, right? Let's make something that's educational. And they really made it pop. All these Muppets. Back then, it was the big technology. So some of the people said, it said, said, well, fuck. How are we supposed to compete with this now? The children are watching these kind of things. And when they come listen to us speak, it's just boring and drab. You know, now we look at movies with CGI and, and the stimulation of things on your phone, people's lives and like uh, people are photoshopping their bodies and things to make to fool you into thinking that they're just like a goddess. Their whites of their eyes are bright white. Their teeth are just look like ebony bones, you know, and every every bad curve or something, they're able to edit things out and make people admire them, admire something that doesn't even really exist. Uh, we have movie stars and all of these things, these thoughts that we look at and supposedly our lives are drab and boring, but the movie stars and the models, and they look great, uh, they've got fame, they get attention, I don't get any attention, I, uh, you know, I'm just a normal Joe Schmo, you know, I, heart, I, I haul garbage and that's my life and my life sucks, that regular life just sucks. And so we're constantly stimulated with these things and... I think it's very difficult to to unplug. I think that it's a perfect system that has been invented, the, the programming and the mind printing of things, to where you get accustomed to what's your biome, what's going on around you, just like a plant does. You know, a plant grows up in an environment and it has to adapt. Um, but the positive of this is, I've said this before, I've got this from Bruce Lipton, The Biology of Belief, where they took human cells and they put them in petri dishes and they separated them and exposed them to different environments. So if you guys understand, this is a, a hopeful positive is that these uh, uh, human cells uh, brought together in your body in one environment, all uh, they, they function at the same thing. So you would think that these, these uh, uh, cells are all going to just do the same thing over and over again. But he proved that when you separate them, they all do different things. Some become... Uh, bones, some become fat, some become proteins, some become sugars, you know, they're, they're, they're separate. So what basically Bruce Slipton is saying is that the biology of belief is the beliefs that we have inside of our mind determine our experiences. Him, and there's a couple other uh, exercises and I would say organizations of thought and philosophies out there that, that apply the same thing. I just thought that his was really awesome because it was something that tangible that people could actually put their hands on instead of just living in the thought form, you know, thinking for your, themselves. So a lot of this stuff that we're stuck on, a lot of these areas that we, we feel like we're in prison, there's nothing that we can do, is all from ourselves. It comes from within. And um, it's kind of harsh, but I think that us as individuals, we're all our own worst fucking enemies. And I really don't give a fuck where you're at, what, what you're doing. There is something of the things that you think you can't be doing, there is something that you can do to get yourself out of wherever you're at and into whatever it is that you want. I think that this, we've become a bunch of spoiled babies. Uh, in a sense, I'm not trying to really beat people up, but with this recession and all these kind of hard times, there's always, you know, people yesterday talking, this country's going down, I don't know what to do, we're all fucked and like, that's horrible talk. That's horrible. I understand. You know, when you don't have the uh, inspiration and, and that we're stuck in this biome of information and thinking that this is all we have and unable to get out of the box. But I'm here to tell you guys, look, you just got to see through it. You got to puncture through the, the fucking the veil of bullshit and notice that there's something you can do. Um, I'm starting my business is starting to suffer here. Uh, I'm not really getting a lot of uh, construction calls and things like that. Although my business is suffering, it doesn't really affect me much right now. I've got enough money to last me a year, two years, maybe even three. And, uh, but I don't want to sit around and do nothing about it. I want to make sure that things are going to get better for me, right? So this is the sort of thinking outside the box that it doesn't really come easy for me. Just sometimes it smacks you in the face, but you've got to be open to it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want you guys to... To look at this story, this thing that I'm look that I'm looking to do. This is actually a real life thing. It's not a story, and I want you to apply this in your life. So, 
I'm up here on a roof and I'm noticing things are getting really slow. Uh, that's what I do for a living. I'm a roofing contractor mainly. And uh, business get really slow. And I'm sitting there on this mansion and there's a, I'm washing this uh, uh, skylight and I'm using some uh, uh, rain -X stuff that the client gave me and they asked me, can you just polish that up for me? I says, yeah, sure. And I'm sitting there polishing this thing up and right next to me is all these solar panels that are all dirty. Uh, being in the off-grid sort of living sustainable resiliency mind frame and practicing. I've got a solar panel on my truck and I know that every once in a while I got to get up there and wash it. Otherwise, it's only producing about 70% to 80% of its full capacity. You know, it's when it gets shaded, uh, it doesn't really work very well. That dirt and grime and oil and stuff sticks to the lens. So I started looking at this and I said, wow, you know what a good business is to, to get a side hustle or maybe even completely replace what I'm doing because I think it would be a hell of a lot easier, a lot less overhead, is washing skylights. And so I started to look into it. I said, oh, wow, I wonder what's out there. There's probably a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of people already doing it. Surely I couldn't be the first one to think of it. And when I started, uh, I Google mapped instantly uh, solar panel cleaners near me. And three, two people showed up in all the area that I'm in. Uh, Sunnyside, San Diego, California, by the way, North County, where everything's super expensive. Uh, so I started to look into this, and then I started watching some YouTube videos. Well, how do you do this? What is all the stuff and equipment and things like that needed? And it's a booming business. It's very open out there, and there's not a lot of people doing it. And the saturation level, it doesn't really mean shit, because as of 2021, it uh, looks like we're, we're going towards a, uh, a skylight, uh, well, well, solar energy uh, um, makeover for all of the United States. So this looks like a very lucrative business and it could just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm able to jump from one thing to another. It's ideas. The other idea I thought of when I was sitting there starting to get a little worried about things slowing down was maybe I could grow seedlings, uh, meaning tomato seeds and things like that. I can grow thousands of seeds for, and I've got a complete automation. Granted, I have an imagination and some, uh, I think some engineering skills, never took engineering schooling, but I have some engineering skills where I'm able to fabricate uh, these ideas of using soil blocks without, you know, growing stuff without plastic and growing a bunch of seedlings, a bunch of plants. Now, Home Depot, Lowe's and places like that are selling them, I think, for like $3.50 a piece. And I looked at, I can probably grow around 3,000 plants, 3,000 seedlings, vegetables at my home and pretty much completely automated. I wouldn't have to do really a damn thing. And I can sell them at $2 a pop, $1.50 uh, uh, cheaper. And I can grow these things relatively quick, probably within, I would say, three weeks, four weeks at max. Uh, these things are ready to, to go out and sell. Now, 3,000 plants times uh, uh, two. That's six thousand dollars a month, people, right? And I could probably get away with doing this uh, for about eight months out of the year, maybe nine. Uh, I I can't think of the math right now as I'm driving, but that's an awful lot of money, right? That's an awful lot of money. <laughs> I think that's what like like fifty four thousand dollars worth of revenue that I can offer something that's completely almost automated. So. When we're able to slow things down, when we're able to live what I coin as an alternative lifestyle design, and we become engineers of our own life, uh, this whole work, my whole entire work that I'm doing here and I'm proposing to people that I'm experiencing in my own life is that I'm not taking the shit that they're, they're, they're uh, offering. I'm not taking the shit sandwich, right? No, I don't fucking need that. A lot of this stuff doesn't make me feel comfortable. When I start thinking outside the box and looking, when I go through the macro, uh, as I always say on the show, I start watching those around me and I start watching the patterns and the things and listening to what people say and it makes me fucking sick. And it seems like a bunch of spoiled little fucking babies that like the drama and want to be, it's like opposite polarities. They want to be here, but they don't want to fucking be here. And you're just on one side, of, it's like you got to choose one side of the fence, man. But I think that it's a... Uh, it's very horrible. It's the demise of each individual, and they don't really want to admit that they just want to lay down and give up. You know, they just want to keep a pulse. They're tired, and you can't blame them because I think deep down, each individual, and this is very harsh, they know that their lives really suck, and they know that they're supporting something that's 
completely amiss. And there's and that truly they feel that there's nothing they can do about it. And they feel weak and tired. They don't know that they're actually a super human being that if human beings, as we learn through permaculture and lots of other different demonstrations, that human beings are so fucking powerful that if we manipulated the land in certain ways, that we bring abundance to insects and microbiology and, and animals, birds and plants, life on the planet changes. We could even make it rain by planting forests. We can re-green the desert. We have lots of power and capabilities, but yet we turn and we look at all the fucking bullshit. And I think that's only a handful. What's very interesting before I end this show is that you look at uh, the very wealthy, right? They say it's like the 1% or something like that. And a lot, there's a lot of businesses that say that 90% uh, of businesses will fail within the first and second year. We've talked about this before. 90% of intentional communities, people coming together and trying to form a group of people to live together in harmony with nature and grow their own foods. 90% of them fail within the first two years as well. Most everything, and if you listen to smart people, they're like, it's lucky if 1% survives or 1% gets uh, what I'm saying right now. If you walk out of this room and apply these business skills, you know, not all of you are going to go do that. I'd be happy if just one of you, if I reached one of you. These people know they're very smart individuals, not dumb fucks like me, you know. But when we average and we look at those things, uh, one more thing on that. Uh, how these patterns, right? All of these patterns and things. Email, uh, or I'm sorry, mail marketing. When you mail flyers to people, the business uh, uh, strategy is, uh, the, the outcome of that is that if you wanted advice, is that you're lucky if you get about 2 to 3% uh, turnaround, meaning out of 100 flyers that 2 to 3 people call you. It'll probably be like 1 to 2 is your odds, right? So you, are you seeing these patterns here? And what we have around us is a bunch of people who are living uh, in this rat race and in this mentality. And there's maybe only 1% of us that are successful, 1% of us that see, 1% of us that will actually do things and that will choose to be happy, choose to be enlightened, choose to make something of ourselves, choose to fight back, choose to not necessarily just fight, but to, as I said, engineer your own life into what you want it. And this is what I coined, the alternative lifestyle design. And this is what is out there, folks. Uh, your life will look completely different from mine. I feel like I'm just an ambassador. Uh, and I kind of don't feel like this is going to reach, this would reach maybe 1% of humanity. I think a lot of rich people, uh, very wealthy, successful people wouldn't listen to someone like me either uh, because they're... They look at it, it's all in the dollars. It's all about wealth and it's all about what is supposedly success is. And I'm here to tell you guys that each of us individuals to find ourselves and find what makes us happy is one of the hardest jobs. To be you is one of the most difficult jobs on the fucking planet. <coughs> to go and make a million dollars and do all these things and say that you've made it, you've been successful, you've gotten there, you've, you've arrived, is only half the fucking part, maybe a quarter of the part. Are you happy? Do you have health? Do you have the wealth of spirituality and this sort of knowledge? Do you know yourself, right? I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people say you're full of shit. I like the fucking money is everything. I'm not against money one bit. I think it's great. I think it's pretty much what's needed in our matrix society here to survive and live, uh, to do it, to actually thrive as well. But I think the biggest note is finding yourself and being yourself. That's the note. I just want to keep rambling on here. Uh, I hope I've inspired you guys, and um, if you guys like this sort of thing, if you've got any value out of it, please review the show, help it get off the ground, uh, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, middle finger, I don't really care. If you're the 1% out there and you're listening, I'm talking to you, not, not the people who just don't get it, don't want to do anything. It's about people who want to do shit, man. So, uh, maybe that was harsh. Should I piss anybody off? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, it's up and in it. Uh, up and in show at gmail.com. Message me. Uh, it's up and in it show on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and anywhere else where you can find the podcast. And guys, as I always say, go out there and have yourself a near life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. Human up. Live it, love it, own it, and bone it, my friends. <laughs>